Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be taking something called the Monster Portable Video Entertainment System. Ugh. Ugh. It's this thing, but I'm going to be pairing it up with some type of computing device or some type of game device. So I don't know what's going to happen because I don't know. It's an IPS panel. Um, I already from the videos I've seen the viewing angle isn't great and then even the 1080p I'm not sure if it's really going to be sharp enough for computer text so I don't know if we're going to end up doing um, you know a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi this is actually an Asus Tinkerbox or if we're going to end up with maybe just like a little HDMI game console so whatever works the best that's what I'll pair it with okay let's look a little bit more closely at the box of this thing IPS 1080p screen, um, 8 hours video playback, which it's because it has a battery, 60 watt max output for speakers, weather resistant, IPX4, so it's a little bit weather, probably a little bit water resistant, which is cool, and microphone input. The cool thing about it that I wanted one for myself was that it has a USB port, and then which can power like 5 volts, maybe 2 amps. So it'll be interesting to see if it's strong enough to power, you know, different little computers, or maybe not. Maybe I just have to go with kind of a more low power device, and that's that's what we're gonna find out. But let's take it out of the box, look at it a little bit more closely. So I've opened the box, and uh, this is why I've been going to the gym lately. Uh. All right, so this is it. Um, kind of an interesting item but the reason I made this video is because it's still available like you can find it on Amazon I think the current price is $259 I think when I bought it for Christmas it was closer to $300 and I think the original price was closer to $400 but you can still find these in stock in case you think like hey this thing would be awesome for you know if you have some application for it um, what interested me is that it's battery powered in case I take it into like a vehicle or something. Um, but on the other hand, you know, generally pretty good reviews on Amazon. There was one that somebody was saying, well, this thing's way too heavy and bulky, um, you know, for what I need. So that's something to think about. It's kind of interesting how bulky it needs to be, considering that's just an IPS panel right there. And then yeah, there's a speaker right here. Um, but, you know, you kind of wonder why it has to be this wide. But you know, it feels pretty solid and it's got some good feet, you know. It feels pretty durable, almost like a something you could throw in like a 4x4 vehicle. Sorry about that, my other camera ran out of batteries. It's a Lumix G7, this is a Lumix G100, my backup. Um, but both of those are notorious for like pretty lousy um, autofocus. So the other one I have like on a fixed manual focus. This one I left on autofocus, so hopefully it's not too annoying. But I was on a roll, so let's keep going. So anyway, um, this is it comes with this like Valkyrie on bag, which is kind of an interesting design thing. That's so you can kind of just have the remote control with you. It's a little uh, like kind of canvas bag. Um, so this is mic volume. This is echo. I guess if you're using like a little PA system, mic jack, auxiliary in, uh, Bluetooth. So it's also a Bluetooth speaker, I guess. Um, USB charging port. So this is a five volt, two amps. Um, I guess this is your pad for changing the channels, menu button, and then a nice power and volume button. But then it's got a hard power toggle switch here. Um, Display. Okay, so the first contender is just going to be this uh, Kano computer, and which is basically, I think, a Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B. And they just, they just have this little board that goes on top um, it plugs into the GPIO pins 
and it gives you some LEDs around so you can do some pro coding exercises and stuff like that. And this is targeted towards kids learning how to code. So they have their own layer of like software um, on top of it with games and like coding exercise, coding tools and things like that. But I think this should require less power than a Raspberry Pi 4. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I have this short HDMI cable that's going to go in here. Um, and then it's just powered by a micro USB, which is going to go into the USB port in the back. And then the, the ideal thing would be if I could close that door in the back so everything is still weather resistant. Um, so let's, let's just shove this in there, see if it works. So I have the USB plugged into USB port and the HDMI plugged into HDMI 1. And we'll shove it in there. Let's see how it does though. Display. We see the lights coming on on the Kano. Okay, so interesting. Um, basically, I switched to HDMI 1. I just didn't bother with that analog and digital channel scanning. And it looks like it's starting up, but for some reason... Oh, wait, here we go. I was spoke too soon. So it's coming up, trying to come up in 720p. So actually it doesn't look too bad. Um, there's a tiny bit of kind of ghosting on the fonts, but not as bad as I was expecting as not as bad as some TVs I've, I've tried before with computers. Okay, screw it. I just use a full size USB keyboard and a full size mouse for now. I'll figure out this thing later. It's a Bluetooth um, keyboard and trackpad. Um, so let's see if that stuff works. Yep. Okay, so one of the advantages of this thing, other than um, the battery and kind of weather resistant portability and all that, is going to be the speaker. So let's try um, Sonic Pi. If you don't know what Sonic Pi is, that's a really cool like coding environment um, to make music. And it's pretty ingenious. It's pretty easy to pick up. Okay, so this is Sonic Pi. Um, so it gives you a little like IDE interactive development environment and then there it uses its own language um, which is pretty easy to pick up it's got if statements like loops sleep you know and then you can play different notes but then you can also play samples and that's what starts making it so let's just play something So one of the um, ideas behind Sonic Pi is people also use this for live performances. So if you want to do like a DJ thing and you kind of like practice a lot, so you're coding some of the stuff live, that's kind of one of the ideas. But this is actually would be a pretty awesome portable Sonic Pi system. And then you have a mic, but I'm not sure if you could mix them. But, um, you know, I could already see potential with this thing just just for Sonic Pi alone. Um. So that wasn't bad. I would count that as a success. And then with the bonus that everything could probably in theory fit in that back compartment and then use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. And then, um, so you've got a whole system that you just need to once in a while charge up the whole big giant monster vision. And then you could kind of take that, uh, hit it on. So, and then that Sonic Pi worked well with it because it's a music app and this big speaker has decent bass. So, Pretty nice system, but I want to try this guy, see if I can beat it. So this is um, the Amiga 500 Mini. So you know how all these little consoles, companies have been doing these little consoles like the Nintendo Mini, Super Nintendo Mini, PlayStation 1, Sega Genesis. But this one is the Amiga version and specifically Amiga 500. So I'm kind of an Amiga guy, like I could actually I do have a real Amiga 500 that I could hook up to this thing um, over um, composite. No, actually it doesn't have a composite. I'd have to go through an adapter to go composite to HDMI. 
So that would be another experiment, but I don't want to go down that road because that would be a whole other uh, dialogue, uh, monologue about Amigas and all this. So that, that would be better for a separate video. But let's try this guy. This is the Amiga 500 Mini. So it's all preloaded, 25 games. Um, it's going to be a good fit, I hope, because it is powered off USB. I'm hoping that, I think that's got 2.1 amps. I'm hoping that's enough. And I think it is going to be, I don't know what the processor is in here. Um, but this one has this really cool kind of retro controller. Um, and then it's like a little miniature Amiga 500. So if you didn't know this existed, yeah, try to snatch one up before these disappear. So obviously it's not going to fit in that back compartment. But even just sitting on top, I think it's going to be worth it if it works well. Let's go try it. Okay, looking good so far. It doesn't look like it's booting weirdly due to lack of power. So this is a top-down shooter. Almost reminds me of like Gauntlet or something, but um, you know, you're on a kind of abandoned spaceship. It's been infested with aliens. You kind of got this cool atmosphere to it because of the drone of the spacecraft kind of. Let's encounter some aliens. Player one requires first day. Destroy weights for a power up. Oh yeah. Select now for power up. Select credits for bonus weapons. That's about it guys. This is kind of a short, kind of quirky video, but I love doing stuff. I like, you know, trying to match up different products, given the fact that they use fairly universal things like USB ports, HDMI ports, um, 
luckily we've been moving to like five five volt power, you know, with the micro USB or USB C, which makes this stuff even more portable. Um, you know, I like that stuff better than I like a 12 volt adapter. Um, and I just like doing that to see maybe you get lucky and just come up with this like really cool combo that people didn't really think about. For other videos, you can of course check out other YouTube videos that review Day 500 more in depth, kind of talking about the collection of games they chose, if it really represented the Amiga that well. Um, I do have several Amigas. My main pride and joy is an Amiga 1200 that's hooked up with like a VGA scan doubler, a minor upgrade like accelerator board. CF card. A lot of these parts came from the UK and so the, the CF card hard drive is loaded with like a ton of games and that thing has been super reliable. I've gotten more enjoyment out of that thing than I actually thought I would and um, so that deserves its own separate video someday. For those of you that subscribed to the last two Atari videos, thanks a lot. Um, and for those of you that subscribed earlier because I was doing um, robotics videos with Misty I haven't forgot about Misty, um, and I actually need to go back. Um, last time I coded was earlier on in the pandemic, but now you know there's some changes to the company and some progress with the APIs. Namely, I think they've done more support for Python now, which is great because Misty took. Um, I was just kind of winging it with the JavaScript, so I could upload programs to Misty. But I'm gonna I'm gonna return to Misty, see see what's changed with the API. If it's Python, that's even better because I'm like a C C++ and Python programmer, and I was just totally winging it with JavaScript. Um, but there definitely will be Misty videos in the future, assuming this model is still compatible with everything. So 2023 is going to be a great year just for playing around with stuff, putting different combinations of stuff together. And this stuff is, you know, it adds up, it's expensive, but we're still talking, we're like in the $200 range for some of these projects. So um, with the price of gas, price of groceries, you know, I would actually grab some of this stuff before inflation kind of goes across the board for everything. Might as well, right? All right, guys, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.